outspoken Conservative MP and now King of the North, Lee Anderson, joins me now. Now, Lee, uh, the Met Police have confirmed that no offences have been identified regarding your recent comments about the comedian and possible Labour candidate for Sheffield, Eddie Izzard. Of course, people like yourself and Rosie Duffield have questioned Izzard's bid to get on the ballot paper and fears he could be running on an all-woman shortlist. Well, I know you haven't seen this yet, but Izzard has actually responded to what you had to say, so have a look at this. Um, I've campaigned as an activist since 2008. I've been out for almost four decades now. So, you know, if some people aren't up to speed, if some people haven't joined the 21st century, well, they've got to get on the bus. So, Lee, Izzard says you need to get into the real world, the world today. The real world. I'm from the real world, Dan, uh, in a place called Ashfield. I, I was a coal miner for many years, following my dad my granddad and my great-granddad into the pits. These were all Labour voters, Labour supporters. A lot of the Labour MPs back in the day were drawn from the trade unionists, from, from, the, from the, uh, the coal miners, the steel workers, the factory workers. Fast forward 40, 50 years, that's what we're looking at um, in the Labour Party. That's what might be coming to Parliament, I hope not, uh, in, in a few years' time. Look, and some of the old Labour voters I talked to back in the real world, in Ashford, have a look at that and think, you know, my goodness, what's it coming to? Well, it was really interesting. Paul Embry, who's, of course, a Labour Party member, a regular contributor to GB News, said, you know, hang on a moment, all of... Uh, and he's a Labour member, of yeah, course. Yeah. All of the members who are getting excited say, this is going to be a romp for Starmer. Actually, on these social issues, on the trans issue, yeah. on, on the fact that you've got a leader who can't even say whether a woman can have a penis or not, that could be what actually defeats Labour. Well, let's, let's just put us into context, Dan. I knock on lots of doors, speak to lots of people in Ashfield, and I can tell you 100%, hand on my heart, this never comes up on the doorstep. People are not talking about it. I tell you who are talking about it, the people in the Westminster bubble, mm. the media, and some left-wing lunatics who, who contact me on not, not too regular basis, but they, do. They, 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 they come into my inbox making all sorts of ridiculous claims. Mm. Nobody in the real world is actually talking about this nonsense. And let's be honest, Lee, no, no one in the real world really believes that Eddie Izzard is a woman, do that? Well, look, Eddie Izzard, I was talking to a colleague today at work who shall remain nameless, who saw Eddie Izzard in a play about 20 years ago where he appeared completely naked. And she said to me, he's definitely a man. <laughs> now, you've gone viral twice this week. Also for this moment, uh, in the house with Suala Braverman. Let's have a look. This was the moment in the house with Suella Braverman where you offered her quite a lot of support. Uh, we'll try and get it in just a moment. But, but the migrant crisis issue and the fact that uh, Suella used the term invasion again, for me, this is proof that she is actually in the real world. What did you make of the pearl clutching going on from the blob and most of the MSC? No, it's, it's absolute nonsense. It is an invasion. Look, I've been banging on about this in the house for the past 18 months. I feel like a bit of a weirdo sometimes keep banging on about it, but actually now some of my colleagues are actually catching up. You know, we're seeing hotels filling up across the country. It's affecting colleagues' constituencies and now they're taking, starting to take notice. Two hours bang on. She's saying all the right things. I just hope that Cabinet Number 10 and the whole, whole of Parliament get behind her because she means business, we mean business, but Unfortunately, um, like I said before, Dan, we, we, we work in a bubble, the Westminster bubble, and they don't take it too seriously. I'll tell you what would help if some of the MPs that's got second homes in and around this place, if the, if the removal men turn up tomorrow and turf them out and put some of these Albanians in, in, in their houses tomorrow, then maybe they'll, they'll get behind her. Well, look, we've got that moment now, Lee, so let's have a look. Yeah, Thank you, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Now then, we've we got Albanian criminals Albania. leaving Albania, which is a safe country. Right. The same criminals are then setting up shop in France. They're then leaving France, which is a safe country, and coming to the UK across the Channel. And then when they get into accommodation, we've got the opposition parties saying the accommodation is not good enough for them. Yeah. Well, does the Home Secretary agree with me that if the accommodation is not good enough for them, they can get on a dinghy and go straight back to France? Yeah. 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 Take a break. Well, my honourable friend's right. The average cost per night is £150 per person per night, to per night in a hotel. By my standards, that's quite a nice hotel. I mean, people can't believe, Lee, that we're spending 
six point eight million pounds a day mm. on these hotels. We're telling people to tighten the belts. You know, we've got a cost of living crisis. You know, we're probably going to have a difficult winter with people struggling to pay the fuel bills. Yet we're letting these people in into our country, our great country. It's costing. It's not just six seven million pounds a, a day, Dan. It's a lot more than that. We're seeing now that uh, hotels they're brimming. People are having their weddings cancelled. There's a massive opportunity cost here throughout the country. And I tell you what, back in the real world, I'll, I'll keep banging on about the real world, people are absolutely furious. And, and the people where I work are let, letting, letting the great country down. Well, this is the number one issue. Massively. And I think Sunak has to give his full throttle backing to Braverman or Superwoman Suella, as I call yeah. her, because actually... That's the only chance you guys have, I think, to win the well, next election if you stop the boats. Because we know Labour's policy is going to be one of open borders. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the alternative <coughs> is even worse. But people are not seeing that at the moment. No. They're very angry with us. No, they see these young men, you know, uh, from 18 to 35 arriving on our shores every day. Some are just running off. You know, if they're running off, they're not genuine asylum seekers. You know, the, the whole system's broken. We've tried to fix it. We need to be tougher, a lot tougher, Dan. Indeed. Now, look, uh, Lee, unbelievably, the left's favourite whipping boy, our favourite Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, has had a 1941 letter he wrote to President Roosevelt <laughs> slapped with a woke warning. So in the letter, Churchill described the German enemy as Huns, and new research from the National Archives brings attention to the, quote, derogatory word. So essentially, Lee, we're now in a world where official British organisations want to put trigger warnings on the words of Winston Churchill. We have to stand up against this stuff. I mean, the, the, the sad thing is, Dan, that these people actually walk amongst us. It, it's absolutely shocking. Look, 50 million people, I think, died in the Second World War, millions more in the First World War. Do we actually think that their relatives, their descendants, are actually bothered about the word horn? I'm certainly not. And, and like I say again, back in the real world, normal people aren't. These people are, are probably paid by taxpayers. They, they're, they're a drain on society. They need to grow up and get a proper job. Now, in the real world, Lee, uh, the status of MPs has taken another hit this week. Yes. Because of that snake, uh, Matt Hancock, saying to hell with the constituents of West Suffolk, I'm going to go and earn £350,000 by eating kangaroo balls in the Australian jungle. What, what did you make of his decision? Because he's had the Tory whip suspended, of course. Well, removing the whip's the right decision. I think it's shocking. It, um, it just... You know, for us new MPs, I've been an MP for... For nearly three years, it just puts puts us in a funny position because people are thinking, people are thinking to themselves, what do MPs actually do? And a lot of MPs work very, very hard, and he's, he's sort of just cast that aside. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's shocking. If he is earning the three hundred and fifty grand, which which I'm hearing at the moment, he should give it away. He says it's not for the money. Prove it, Matt. Give it give all that, away. Give it all away. But he won't. He's giving a tiny portion to a local charity. Yeah. He will not give it all away. It's absolutely so, rubbish. So, so there's no way back for him now in the Tory party? I don't see how there is. I mean, that's up to the, the, the party itself. But, you know, to go away when his constituency needs him, when his people in, in, in the area lives need him, for 350 grand, come on, Dan. What does that say about our profession? It's a disgrace. It's an it's absolute disgrace. Our King of the North, Lee Anderson. Thank you, Lee. We will speak next week. Yes,